So in this slide, we'll be like discussing about outsourcing and offshoring. So what is outsourcing and offshore, offshoring we'll uh, see in this video. Outsourcing is the transfer of a specific process or work streams from one organization to a third party supplier. So we try to take one specific process in a company and we give it to a uh, third party company. So for example, like we can outsource our web designing, we can outsource our call center, we can outsource uh, surveying. So we can outsource a lot of our non-core processes to some other third party company. And what is offshoring? When we outsource the part of a, a process to another country. So when we do it within our country, when we outsource a process of work within our country, it's called, uh, called as outsourcing. When we transfer the same work okay, to another country, then it becomes called, then it is called as a offshoring. So outsourcing is usually domestic. So it leads to faster installation and uh, ready to start. But for offshoring, it takes a lot of time as we have to deal with another country and it's also time consuming. Outsourcing involves only low investment and good savings. But in offshoring, there are a lot of like rules, regulations that a company has to comply with the foreign country. So the high, there's a higher investment and also a higher savings which we can have. It is suitable for small scale and large scale companies. And offshoring is usually suitable only for large scale companies. And in outsourcing, there is not much of a cultural risk. But in offshoring, there is a problem of dealing with foreigners. So employees are usually the foreigners. So uh, there is also a cultural element which is added to the risk of running a offshoring activity. So if you guys really like the video, put a like for us and share it with your friends who might find it useful. So usually the advantages are pretty much common for outsourcing as well as offshoring. So the advantages are uh, the company can concentrate on the core activities, hence like non-core activities are like outsourced. Because of that, it frees up the company's resources. There is lower personal cost. So the cost of uh, employees now it's much more lower than what it was before. Before we have to employ 100 people mean. Now we just need to employ 80 people. Better quality of service. The offshoring, the outsourced activity is a non-core activity for our company, but for the third party company, that is their main core activity. For example, if we outsource our call center activities to another company, that other third party company will be a, for him, the call center business is the core activity. So they can provide a better quality of service. Outsourcing of investment risk. So the company doesn't need to buy any personal they don't need to employ any personnel. The company doesn't need to buy any hardware or software. So the cost of investment is actually borne by the third party company. Projects are now much scalable. So even with even with the less amount of capital, you can become a much more bigger company like what Amazon is doing. So Amazon, if they want to own everything from end to end, that becomes a very costly thing. But what they are doing is they are outsourcing a lot of activities so that they have become a much bigger company shorter reaction time to customer consumer needs so what are consumers want it will be like quickly solved by the third party company themselves so the reaction time to what a customer consumer wants can be like quickly known by the outsourced company sorry shorter reaction time to consumer needs as the activity is like outsourced to another company who is a specialist in that he knows like what the customer needs are and how to satisfy that need properly. So in terms of call center activity, rather than our company having a call center, if we leave, if we outsource the process to another uh, third party company, that company knows how to deal with call center problems. So they are a specialist in that. Our company can focus on the core competency and it also leads to cost advantages. So these are the advantages of outsourcing and offshoring. The disadvantages are, once we have outsourced, we are always have to depend on the third party service provider. Risk to lose know-how. See, when we keep on outsourcing a lot of activities, we all we lose the ability to learn. That's one. And there is also a problem of again in-housing the same activity. So once it's easier to outsource, for example, if your mom starts to outsource her cooking to some other hotel, okay, 
so you don't cook at all at home your mom doesn't cook at all cook at all at home what happens is you depend upon a hotel suddenly after some 10 years you want or your mom wants to cook by herself can she do it there is going to be a problem of relearning so that can be a risk the problem of relearning is a risk undesirable is that we don't know we we might not be sure whether the third party company can do a reasonably good job security issues data moves from our company to to a third party company so there can be a security issues even in case of uh, offshoring there is also a cultural incompatibility so the difference between two countries culture can come into play here language can be a problem for example in terms of the style of speaking the style of speaking of an uh, uh, britain is different from how indians speak so that language difference or the style of language can be a problem additional effort for knowledge transfer and process setup so our con- company has been running a kind of a process for a long time if we are going to outsource it to another company then we also have to teach them as to how to handle that process so there's an additional cost of knowledge transfer and the process setup so these are the advantage disadvantages of outsourcing and offshoring so if you guys really like the video put a like for us and share it with your friends who might find it useful so we'll move on to the shared services so shared services is a very new concept here so it is nothing but an extension of the outsourcing and offshoring concept so it is a one step ahead of the offshoring concept so usually in out- offshoring what a company does is it gives a part of its process to another third party company just imagine if you are going to outsource a part of your process to a uh, third pro- third party company okay uh, assuming a call center for every call that is being attended by the third party company okay your company has to pay 100 rupees we'll pay take it as 100 100 rupees within that 100 rupees there is also an element of a profit for the third party company right he is doing the work only for a profit so we'll assume that there is going to be a 30 rupees of profit so out of the 100 that is being billed to you 70 is his cost okay and 30 is the third party company's profit okay now the question is this if you are going to eliminate the third party company and you are going to start a business in another country in a foreign country because that's what offshoring is you're going to start a another third party company by yourself in another country what would be cost of providing the the call center service see now the cost of attending each call would be not 100 it's only 70 because that was our third party company's cost so we have effectively reduced the profit that the third party company was making so now we have offshored all our activities but we have offshored it to another country where that company is our company okay that company is also our company this is an example of shell shared service center if you take shell company is throughout the world but what they have done is they have created offshoring activities okay they have also they have offshored a lot of activities in terms of expenditure record to report revenue management information data they have outsourced a lot of activities but where they have outsourced this they have outsourced it to locations like glasgow kharkov uh, chennai kuala lumpur and manila to these centers they have outsourced okay offshore but these companies are not third party companies they are also owned by shell okay so shell is an oil exploring company but they also have this shared services company also where they are a they are locations where the entire com- global network of shell companies have outsourced their activity to these centers okay so these centers handle this kind of financial activities for the entire world company so a shared service cen- service refers to the centralization of a service that has previously been carried out remotely at each business unit so every business center in throughout the country assume that there are like 50 locations everywhere the every shell company has to do some kind of an accounting work but that accounting work unlike systems such as outsourcing shared services will be carried out within the organization and will not require the use of a third party organization so we are going to outsource that activity but to whom to our own company in certain specific locations 
but the provision of service will typically move to one location with fewer staff and the consolidation of IT system. So the accounting work. So the accounting work in any of the 50 branches will not be done. Okay, if any of the branches need any accounting work, they will outsource it to the these five centers. So advantages extend the reach without increasing its size. So the scale of doing it is much more higher. It also offers economies of scale because each center now is a is a very huge company on its own by its own. So they can offer economies of scale. Can be benchmarked against external service providers. There are also other shared services companies like this against which we can find out whether our shared services companies are doing well. It leads to efficiency. All talent and expertise in that service can be gathered around in clusters. So you can get all the financial experts and all accounting experts in one place. Removes the organizational boundaries between business units. So these are the advantages. So the disadvantages are initial resistance to change because we are going to tell to all the 50 branches of shell company that you are not going to do accounting anymore. We are going to outsource it to our own company in some other location. So if you are going to tell that, that is going to be an initial resistance to change. Local business managers will lose control of service. So there is going to be a problem even with the managers. Creating appropriate target for the sale service can be time consuming. Against what can we measure that they are performing well? These shared services companies are performing well. It takes time to find out the actual benchmark. Issues in determining the price that should be charged to business units for the use of the service. So now, if any of these 50 centers want to use the services of these shared service companies, they have to actually pay for it. If they need to pay for it, what would be the price? So if you guys really like the video, put a like for us and share it with your friends who might find it useful. So if you guys have any queries or questions, post it in the comment section. We will be like happy to answer them. If you guys have any other ideas for further videos, uh, you can put it in the comment section. We will be like uh, creating a new video on that topic also. So thank you guys. We will meet in the next video.